Hi, everyone. We are so happy to have you, whether you are joining us here today or will be watching later on the Cura Gappa A YouTube channel. We ask that you please mute your mics if you have not done so already and include any questions that you might have in the chat box below. We will have time to answer the questions at the end of the presentation. My name is Monica Joanna Alnacabe, and I'm the founder and CEO of Cure Gaba A, a nonprofit organization with the sole focus to develop potential therapies for Gaba A variants by partnering with world renowned researchers in Gaba A and the Organization of Patients for Clinical Trials. Mm -hmm. Today, we welcome Sierra Phillips. Sierra Phillips is the driving force behind Library. Library is a passion project stemming from her journey as a rare giver with her son who was diagnosed with Borsal Breakage Syndrome in 2021. Recognizing the scarcity of resources for families facing rare conditions, Sierra curated a comprehensive resource guide. I'm handing it off to you, Sierra. Please share with us this exciting tool that will save our Cure Gaba A community a lot of time as you have created the most amazing rare library. Of course, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Sierra Phillips and like Monica said, I am a caregiver to my son, Jack, who has Warsaw Breakage Syndrome. Jack is a twin. Jack and Charlotte, his twin sister, were born in March of 2021. Jack was diagnosed with an AV canal heart defect when I was 16 weeks pregnant with them. They were born at 33 weeks and did um, some time in the NICU, about six weeks. And it was very full circle for me because I have an educational background in human and molecular genetics. I did my PhD, human genetics at VCU. And then after leaving um, grad school, I started working at a company called PPD which is a contract research organization. I worked for our bioanalytical lab. So I helped different biotech and biopharma companies um, develop assays to use in their clinical trials. And then we would also then test the samples from their clinical trials. And a lot of the companies I supported focused on rare disease drug development. Um, so it was in rare before I had my children, one who is rare. Um, and I recently left PPD and have started working at GeneDx. So um, it's been a wild journey and library has been, like Monica said, a huge passion project of mine. It really stemmed from feeling so overwhelmed. I could tell you everything mechanistically and biologically about Jack's gene and the mutations and what that meant. But as far as how to fill out a Medicaid waiver? Did we even qualify for Medicaid waivers? Um, do I need to apply for a disability waiver? Does he need social security? Um, what kind of resources? Like, how do I find an early intervention therapist? What's DMI therapy? All these questions um, that I really didn't know I needed to ask until I started talking with other caregivers. Um, the most like profound moment, kind of the spark behind library was Jack, um, we had just gotten home from the hospital. We had to take a helicopter to a hospital nearby. Jack had COVID. Um, this was before he had his heart repaired. And we got a $75,000 bill from the company that um, flew us to the hospital. And I was panicking. We were you know, contemplating filing for bankruptcy. And we were at a, a dinner party with some friends. And this um, other mom came up to me and I, she could tell I think I was stressed and she's like are you okay and I said no and I kind of just word vomited the whole thing all out to her and she looks at me and she goes does Jack have a waiver and I said what's that um you know and that was like the first instance where I was like wow the people who are supposed to know or like the people who you think would tell you things don't always um and this is not like a finger pointing blame game um there are so many things, especially in this space, I think that are gray as far as like whose job it is to tell parents and caregivers about them. And, you know, your pediatrician might think a social worker told you. They might not know that you never saw social work in the NICU. Um, so it's not to blame anybody, but that was really the big thing that I was like, wow, there's so much out there that I don't know. And 
another one was um, we have a DMI therapy place here in Richmond called Hope that I didn't know about until I met another mom and was talking to her and she was like, oh, wow, is Jack on the wait list for Hope? And I was like, what's that? She's like, oh, you need to call them immediately because the wait list is like almost a year. Um, and so I started making a little list on my computer. Um, it was a Word doc of all the things in Virginia where I'm from, like in Central Virginia, that other parents would need to know about or should look into if they have a kid with a disability or a rare disease. Um, and upon doing research, I found out that Virginia has a program called a Family Navigator Program. I was super thrilled that I said, I would love to do this. I'd love to help other families. And I reached out and applied and I went to the interview and it was great. And the panel asked me to tell them about some resources I would share with families as a part of this program. I told them about Hope Therapy and another um, program that Virginia has called the Lifespan Respite Voucher. And no one on the panel knew either of the two resources, which I was like, wow, this is your job to know these things. Um, and they're like, this is great. Like you sound amazing. We love, we love you. And this was March of last year. So March, 2023. Um, our next training is the end of October. And I was like, that's too long. And they're like, yeah, we could probably get you trained and, you know, matched with your first family to help, you know, by, you know, in 18 months from now. And it's like, people need help now. Um, and that's how I really went full steam ahead with library. I started, you know, doing more research and making the list bigger and bigger. And Jack's therapist, his physical therapist saw it one day and she's like, wow, you should share this on social media. And I did, and some other people saw it. Um, my now dear friend Effie Parks, Once Upon a Gene, the podcast, she somehow saw it and she was like, holy cow, this is amazing. She put it everywhere. Um, other people were sharing it. Other advocacy organizations have it on their had it on their website. Um, and it got to the point where it was just too much for me to manage on my laptop on a Word doc. Um, Effie and I would get on the phone and have to beg the guy who does her website to help us because we I broke the PDF formatting and it was like all wonky. And I really decided, I was like, wow, we need to get this onto it's like a website. We need to make this into a website. And I just happened in my resource searching one day, bumped into this company called Commends. They were a really early startup. And I filled out you know some info on their website. They contacted me. We, you know, been in we had a couple conversations. They were doing some like really early market research on some tools that they were thinking about building for the rare disease community. And they basically thanked me for helping them so much and asked what they could do for me. And I said, well, you guys could really help me by taking my Word document that's 500 pages and turning it into a website, which is where we are today. Um, library is now a freestanding website. It, so I will go ahead and share my screen. Now we can, I'll do a little demo. So this is the landing page for library. When you type in library.com or you click the link from one of our social media pages, this is where you will land. Um, we're working on making some updates to this because right now it can be a little overwhelming when you just are hit with a blank search bar box like you are when you go to Google. Um, but we tell people right now, probably the best thing to do if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, which is kind of the hardest part because it's hard to know what you're looking for when you don't know what's out there is to hit this button right here called Browse Them All. And this will take you to kind of the full back end of the database. It has all like the 4,500-ish resources listed. Um, and then we would go and tell you to filter by whatever is interest of you. If you want something specific to where you live, so we have all the states as well as a couple of other countries um, we're working on expanding internationally. So if you are international listening to this, we are working on adding more, um, but I wanted to focus on the United States first and then expand. So we're working on Canada, Europe, and Australia at the moment. Um, there are different topics. If you are interested in a specific topic like clinical trials, um, you can select that and look through and see all the different uh, resources we have for learning more about clinical trials. Um, we also have filters for demographic. If you want to find resources that are targeted for caregivers, children, employers, um, resources that are like you know for medical professionals. So these are ones like that are great to share with 
um, your doctors or researchers you're working with, um, therapists. Um, let's see what else. Siblings is a good one. We have lots of great resources for siblings. Also, epilepsy is another one on here that has a ton of resources. There's about 150 epilepsy resources in the library currently. And then the last category are what we call services. Um, so if you're looking for you know, bereavement support, um, help with prescriptions and medications, help with finances, genetic testing, insurance, legal help, um, respite, sports, activities, camps, um, technology and equipment, there's basically travel, lodging, um, services around transition. Uh, there are basically library I designed it to have everything about everything. I wanted it to be all encompassing and have all the information you needed in one place so you didn't have to navigate so many different websites trying to piecemeal all of this together. Um, yeah, it's, that is really it. Um, it's super basic at the moment. We spent a lot of our emphasis to get this up was really on the content um, and less on the design. And now we're going back and trying to work on improving the design and um, making sure it's super intuitive and user friendly. Um, you can browse library for free without an account. Um, library always will be free to families and caregivers. Um, but if you make an account, um, you are able to do a couple additional things that you can't do if you don't have an account. One is this button right here. If you have a resource that you want added, you click this button, new resource. Um, you just have to put in the name the website, a description, the type, which can be an organization, media, which we use for like a YouTube video, a podcast, um, a movie or a product, um, something that is sold, and then a location and categories. Um, and so you can tag them, you submit it, and then I review them and approve them on the back end. And so we'll just go to Effie's link right here at the top. Um, if you are looking for a resource or you click on a link, create collections. So if you want to save this, I already have it saved, but um, you can create kind of like a collection and I have a couple on here. Um, and it's basically kind of like a Pinterest board. Um, that's really it for library. I would say I would love, you know, share about library, um, use it add what, you know, add things that are missing, interact with the resources, share the resources. Um, and if you have feedback, comments, questions, we are more than happy to hear it. And we love talking with other people in the space, especially caregivers, That's what we built this for. Thank you so much, Sierra, for sharing this resource. I mean, the resource in your library is truly all encompassing and you have all the information in one place. It makes it so easy. Uh, one of the features that I really like is the Pinterest and we'll probably get started on that to create something for our community. Um, I just wanted to thank you for putting together this resource. I know it takes a lot of time and energy to put something together like this.